Hello, my name is Jacob, and I am a Norse pagan. And today, I want to continue the series I started a few weeks ago on the Nordic symbols, um, which the first episode we did the Vegvasir, and this episode I want to talk about the Volknut, or at least the symbol in which we know is called the Volknut, because with everything we're going to find there are a lot of inconsistencies and misconceptions that we have about these symbols and about many aspects of this faith and the history behind it. So, of course, we're going to be talking about the ancient history as far as the evidence we have from the pre-Christian Scandinavian and Germanic societies, but also written in the prose and poetic Edda. And then we'll be talking about the modern history and usage and controversies behind the symbol. And, of course, finishing off with what I believe needs to be done with the symbol or what I believe the symbol stands for. So the first thing we need to talk about is the name itself. So Volknut is not actually the name for this symbol. The ancestors and the pre-Christian practitioners never actually called this thing a Volknut. And in fact, we don't actually know what they called it. There are theories. And Volknut itself is actually a modern term. We don't actually know the origin of it the first time it was called a Volknut. But we know that the, the term Volknut actually comes from a completely different symbol. Besides Volknut, the other term you might see used with this symbol is Hrubnir's Heart or Hrubnir's Harte, which is from the prose Edda story, oh gosh, Skaldskarpemal. And again, I apologize, I'm American, and I probably will never do these things correctly. Uh, but this is the story that is from, and the story of Hrupnir, which we're actually going to be looking in as well, because this is also where we get the two prevailing theories for what this symbol means, at least in an ancient context. Instead of going straight into the meaning of the symbol, or at least the multiple meanings and interpretations of the symbol, let's look at the evidence for where we see the Volknut of Hrugnir's Harta um, in stories and in artifacts. So the first artifact I want to put up here is the Nena Ring, or the Nina Ring. I don't actually know how to pronounce this. This ring is from around 700 to 900 CE. Now what makes the symbol interesting is the fact that it's made of gold. The preferred uh, precious metal used by the Viking people was actually silver. And so it's just interesting that it's made of gold, but we really don't know why it's made of gold. All we know is that this Volknut symbol um, is actually on the ring itself, with very little context to tell why it's on the ring. The next piece of evidence we can look at is the Osenberg ship, which is one of the most famous ship burial sites that have been um, excavated. And within one of the bedposts that was buried alongside of the person that was buried there, the Volknut is actually represented on the side of the bedboard. So again, it's interesting that it's in this very undescript, like we've seen it on a ring, we've seen it on a bedpost, or we've seen it in a burial mound and more, more precisely. So the next piece of evidence is probably the most popular one and the one where we, we draw a lot of conclusions from, which is on the Stora Hammerstone, which is in Gotland. And on this, we see the depiction of the Volknut right above a body. Now we can't tell, and it seems like a lot of theories float around whether this is a sacrifice. A lot of people try to you know, say this is a blood eagle because of the uh, presence of the ravens and the falcon, but um, there's also a spear involved, so Odin could be involved in this as well. But there is no saying whether this is actually a sacrifice or if it's a ritual, you know, ritual sacrifice or death uh, execution, or if it's to represent someone dying and going to the afterlife. All we know that there is a person that looks like they're dead and or dying, the Volknut, a man with a spear, and birds. So we can draw conclusions from that, but also it's just, there's no concrete evidence on any of those things being one specific thing. The next stone I want to talk about is the Tangela Garda stone. So I actually had a lot of problems finding information on this. Um, there isn't really a lot out there, and it was even hard to find where it's located. To me, this backs up the Hugnir's Harta theory, which you see the Volknut placed under the horses, so we'll dive into that in just a moment. Um, but these are some of the main pieces of evidence that I could dig up and I could find where the Volknut of Hugnir's Harta is actually shown. And so this is where a lot of people start drawing conclusions. And then of course we have the prosetic story as well. The main two theories that seem to float around the most around the symbol that we know as the Volknut is that it is a, either a symbol of death and Odin or it is a symbol from the story of Skalskapramal and Hrugnir's heart. And so let's look at those two things and where those conclusions come from. I think the one with connection with Odin and death 
comes mostly from the fact that we have this one stone in the um, store hammer stone that shows the Volknut around a body, around a man with a spear, with two bir you know two birds, or actually three birds, prevalent. And so a lot of people seem to draw these two things together. It's just a debate in the community, it seems, and in the you know the scholarly and historic community, whether this is actually a sacrifice or if it's just someone dying and you know going up to Valhalla or being taken to Valhalla by Odin, or you know it's just it seems like there is no conclusive result to what this means or what the Volknut actually symbolizes in this scenario. I think it also helps us the conclusion that we have found a Volknut in a burial site on a bedpost. Now, we can't say for certain whether or not that bedpost was put in there as a, you know, as a ceremonial object or if that bedpost was actually used by the person that was buried in the Eisenberg ship. And then with the ring, the ring doesn't really give us anything besides the fact that it was worn as a very, as a common symbol in the sense that it was Really, we can, all we can say is that, you know, yes, it seemed to have a sacred meaning, but someone at one point also had it on a ring, which shows that maybe it was less sacred than we think. Again, it's hard to say. It's hard to draw these conclusions from what evidence we have. But then let's move to the story of Fugnir. So this comes from the prose edda, which we all know that I have my problem with the prose edda, but otherwise we wouldn't have the information we have. So this line I found about a dozen times on the internet and through various sources of one of the key reasons that we think this has to do with Fugnir. So this comes from Skaldskarpamal, and here we go. Hrugnir had a heart that is renowned, made of solid stone, and spiky, with three points, just like the symbol for carving called Hrugnir's heart that has since been made. His head was also of stone, his shield was also of stone, broad and thick. And so just to recap what Skaldskarpamal is about, it's um, at least one of the parts about it, at least the part about Hrugnir, is Hrugnir was a giant that saw Odin racing across the sky. And he said, oh, I, you know, basically said that he could race Odin and win. Odin made a bet of his head. Of course, Odin won. Um, Trugnir came back to Asgard for a feast and ended up getting too drunk and boasting. And Thor ended up challenging him to a duel. Um, Trugnir left, got challenged through the duel by Thor. Thor killed him very quickly. The horse that he raced on was called Gulfaxi, which was given to Thor's son, Magni. And so this horse is connected to this story as well. And so there's a horse, there's Hrugnir, there's Odin, and then there's Thor, and of course him boasting at Asgard, and then his heart made of stone. Now, it does say specifically that the stone heart was carved later on, so of course you can look at this and say, oh, well, it says that the stone heart was carved, you know, that carving, Vulcanote, the symbol, three points. Maybe you can draw that conclusion. But I want to put up a chart for you, and it's basically showing where these conclusions have been drawn in a very simple way. It's just because, oh, look, we have a story about Hrugnir's heart, and we have this draw, you know, this depiction here that shows a horse and these two symbols combined. Now, is it just mentioning this story? Is this symbol, is this carving that came long before the story that Snorri wrote actually connected to these two things? And then, of course, you have things like the ring and the bedpost connected to the ideas of death, or maybe there's no connection at all because maybe these things have nothing in common with one another. It's just that this is the evidence that we have for the symbol that we know as the Volknut. And so, look, you know, drawing conclusions between these objects can give us some evidence or some idea of what the symbol means, but also there is a likelihood that none of these things have anything to do with one another. And that's the thing that makes research into the Old Norse and the Old Norse history and religion so hard, is that we cannot say for certain that these things were and you know that these things were in common or at least shared an idea um, all we know is that the Volknut is an old symbol and that it was used in the burial mound it was on a ring and it was potentially about talked about in a story and it has something to do with a man with a spear and death and that's kind of all we know I, of course, um, I'm going to put all the research I did um, in the description below if you want to look at the sources I used. Um, and if you have any other sources, please share them with me because I had a lot of trouble finding information on this symbol. There's not a lot of books that go in depth about it, and a lot of the web articles basically say the same thing. So I, I really tried to di dive into this one, and I honestly couldn't find that much variety of evidence besides the core ones, which were the Storz Hammerstone and Frugnir's Harta. Now, let's move in this into the modern era and what this means in the modern context. So, obviously, this symbol is everywhere. If there's something that has to do with Norse or Vikings, you're going to find a Volknut 
somewhere in that story or in that media. I mean, almost any video game that talks about um, the Vikings in any way, the symbol is going to be somewhere. It is one of the most popular symbols to have as a tattoo, one of the most popular symbols to have on a t-shirt or a necklace or a ring. This thing is everywhere. So what does that mean for the modern context? Before we get into that, I think there is something that we do have to mention is the fact that this the symbol as a Volknut is on the ADL website, which is essentially the hate symbol website. And I'm just going to read for you what it says on this website. The Volknut, or the Knot of the Slain, is an Old Norse symbol that often has represented the afterlife in carvings and designs. It is often considered a symbol of the Norse god Odin. Some white supremacists, particularly racist Odinists, have appropriated the Volknut as the use as a racist symbol. Often they use it as a sign they're willing to give their life to Odin generally in battle. Non-racist pagans may also use the symbol, so one should carefully examine it in context rather than assume that a particular use of the symbol is racist. We cannot escape the fact that the symbol has been used by hate groups in the past and is still currently used by them. But I would also argue that we've done a really good job at taking this symbol back. Just like I mentioned, you see this symbol everywhere. The symbol is no longer hidden from society. It is on so many of us. It is on myself. I have this tattoo on my chest and it represents something different to me. And I know so many people have this on jewelry, have it as tattoos, have it on their clothing. They have bookmarks with it on it. This symbol is everywhere. And so to me, this symbol has become something different. While yes, it may have been used for hate, I think we've done a pretty darn good job at taking this symbol back. I think it's a really good step that even on the ADL website, it has an entire section devoted to, hey, there are people that have this symbol that are not racist. We have a sub note on this website. It's not saying, all people with a symbol are racist. I think that's a really good step, and I think we have to acknowledge those things. And even the German government, I found this out, the German government doesn't even consider the Volknut a racist symbol anymore. It's not considered a hate symbol. And so, again, great job. We, we did it. We took back a symbol in a way. Like, yes, it's still here because Nazis still use it, but I think that we use it enough as normal practitioners of this faith without extremist views have done a really great job of taking this symbol back. As far as an ancient context, there's really not much we can attach onto. Now, with me, I got this as a tattoo because of that connection with Odin, because when I started on this path, I saw Vuknut, and I made that connection with Odin you know, right away. And so when I made my oath to Odin, I was like, oh, I'll use this symbol because it's connected with Odin. I've also heard whispers that people think this is a symbol of realm travel. It allows someone to travel between realms, that Odin himself used it to travel between realms. These are cool and awesome ideas, but I have not seen any concrete evidence to suggest this is something that was true, or at least something that was believed in an ancient context. But we have to remember that we are the guardians of these symbols and the keepers of these symbols now, and they will take on new meanings. I believe when we have something like this on us or on our jewelry, we are venerating a past, we're venerating an ancient custom and religion, even though we don't necessarily know the exact meaning of it. And that meaning is evolving and changing just like the faith is itself. We as modern practitioners are in a strange place with our ancient symbols because quite frankly, we do not know that much about hardly any of our symbols, especially symbols like the Volknut. And they are also big subjects of debate in the community and also have their stigmas around them. But I definitely think we've done a good job at erasing that stigma and setting a new example for the Vol symbols like the Volknut. And I think we just gotta continue to set examples of what the Volknut is. But I think there's something that all of us should be able to agree on is that this symbol is not a symbol of hate. It is not a symbol of division. It is a symbol of history that deserves to be respected and protected by the modern torchbearers of this religion and this faith. And I think the best thing that we can do with our ancient symbols is to stay informed, stay educated, and educate others with the facts. So folks, until the hall, skull.